I want to talk a little bit about landscape design in practice. Aside from using stitching and sewing machines as an alternative to pen and ink or other art media, um, the tree in the view is a salix discolor, also known as a pussy willow tree. And as you can see, uh, the people that own the property don't really take care of it. It's got lichen on many branches. Um, there is some new growth. It's nothing like it usually is. Um, it actually had already bloomed and it was covered with bees about two weeks ago. Um, and now you can see that there's very few new leaves on it. And this is because of poor tree care. This tree, um, we had a blizzard a few years ago and every single branch you see, even the thick ones, were on the ground. The tree collapsed, it, it just, under the weight of the ice. And ever since then, it's got breaks in the main, um, it did come back up. I, I spent about three days getting the ice off of it. I got it back up, um, but it's got breaks in the trunk. And so now it's just never come back. And a lot of the branches need to be trimmed off of it. It needs to really be cut back. And it's a shame because it's been here I think, uh, well, between me and the owners, we think about 40 years. And, um, you know, I keep, I have the skills to do it and they won't let me touch the tree. I don't know why. But really, in um, what I want to talk about are the pines. You see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. From the red car, to the corner are 20 pine trees and uh, these are Pinus regida also um, they could be called scrub pine or pitch pine they're kind of cranky old trees um, and they they do exactly what they want here's a close-up of one over here and even here there are four of them now these four have been here for I don't know 27 years. Um, by the size of their trunks, you can tell that they're about 60 years old, this one in front of me, and the one further away on the left that's leaning a little bit, probably 70 years. Um, oh look, a little monarch. I hope that's in the view, it just left. But um, this has holes in it. As you can see, it's another one with um, pine borer beetle. And so growing trees is not just about planting a tree and then walking away. Growing trees is about spacing them. Straight ahead there are, um, there's one which would have been a nice looking tree. And then next to it is a smaller one uh, planted or sprouted um, like six inches from it. In other words, when you do landscape design, you can't plant trees like this. Each tree that you expect to get this big needs about 15 feet in either direction for the roots. So these two trees are completely intertwined. This is why landscaping and tree removal becomes a problem because you can't dig up one tree without totally destroying the tree next to it unless you plant them correctly. Now, most of these are seedlings that have just blown off the other trees, but proper management means you take those seedlings down and each tree should have like 15 feet in all directions for its roots. Now, especially here on Cape Cod, um, we have a very high water table and sandy soil, which means that the roots don't have to go very deep in order to um, get their nutrients. So within the first two feet of soil, that's where most of the roots are. Again, you have to watch for this because in a storm, that's why they come down. That's why these big old trees can come down in a storm. So. When you're thinking about possible landscape design um, in thread or even in, um, you know, traditional methods. Now here, um, I have to show you something and I hope my neighbors know I'm not filming their house. Um, toward the back, 
and I can't tell because of the reflection if it's in the view, I think it is. Right at the back corner of their house, you see a little baby pine. Now, um, we had a storm. One of the big pines came down in the backyard. So the people did what they thought was the best thing, and they went and got a replacement tree, and they planted it at, at the corner of the property there. The only problem is, and I didn't have the heart to go tell them, um, they planted it within five feet of two other already large trees. So somebody's going to lose the battle there. There are three trees within 10 feet. So when you're planning a design, you can't plan trees to be planted like this. This is natural if they're all seedlings that have sprouted up, but it's also a lack of maintenance because they become diseased, um, they get pine borer beetles. If these two come down, the wires come down. Uh, the girl next door over there had a brand new car, and because of all those um, lopsided trees, because they're too crowded, they're all reaching for the sun, they become lopsided. Um, three of the major branches came down on a brand new car and smashed in the roof. You know, so um, there are many reasons to do good tree planting and designing in the first place so that whether you're a homeowner or whether you're a landscape designer who then feels responsible for your designs, you don't want to be designing things where 20 years down the road, the house is destroyed because a tree fell over on it. So these are all, when, when you're doing your designing, this is why I say um, use a little handheld stitcher for sketches. Even if you only make circles, go around and look at well-planted um, houses and note in your sketches where they have their trees, what kind of trees, because any of the other plants you add to a garden are going to um, compete with but complement a tree. Normally there's going to be at least one major tree in a landscape design. 